Hello, my name is Bahodor, and today I want to talk about uh, the diode, the capacitor, and the inverter module with CV of Pulsar 23. And uh, it's just a way of explaining it and showing it exactly what it does, which I think it's not talked about much. And uh, at the end, I will do a patch trying to use uh, different things that we tried in the beginning of the session. All right, so let's get right into it. Let me tell you what these cables are actually doing. So the clock is coming from off the screen from my uh, Pamela's new workout. The first one is the clock and the second one is a 16th note uh, trigger. And this one is a LFO coming from maths. So later on, we'll try to use it as well. These two cables are the red and the blue one, which I will connect a red and blue cable to it. They go to my uh, sound card, and uh, from there it goes to VCV rack, so we can see stuff in the oscilloscope, and we can understand them better. Yeah, These two are going to be the main things around the whole... <coughs> patch let me first run this whole thing yeah it's running okay and uh, all right and the 16th node by the way is going to the chaos module so that it's all synced up okay now so uh let me put on my headphones and uh, connect a 16th node to the trig input of uh, the hi-hat And I will attach the red cable to the trigger so we see what's happening. So as you can see, let me zoom in a little bit. Uh, the trig inputs that we are getting from uh, that we are getting from the 16th node is always, most of the times at least, is giving us 10 volts, right? So now, what we can do, we can modulate it using an LFO or some, some other CD. And we can use the diode to do that. So, what I'm going to do now is that, so from this 16th note, I'll just get a smaller cable. I will go into the input, to the left input of the diode. And... Um, attach a cable from the LFO here. I'm gonna put it in the, it's in the low mode, right? I'm gonna lower the uh, frequency so that it's more noticeable. I'm coming out from the triangle output and going right into the right input or output of the diode. Now, as you can see in the scope, uh, the, the volume or the volt of the prigs are going up and down with the LFO and I can uh, modulate it even more. I can just, or maybe even zoom in out, zoom out a little bit. Yeah, as you can see, it's going up and down and we can hear it also. Pretty interesting. So it can be anything. You, know, you don't have to use the LFO. You can use any other source of CV. For example, we can use, uh, let's just use the envelope of the kick. I'm, I'm just for the sake of demonstrating it. I'm just going to go off from this, turn the volume down. And <clears throat> as you can see, I'm here. <laughs> Every time the kick hits, so it gets uh, this envelope heads on, now it's the cake one. So it will go higher in volume. Which is very interesting. And we can also use other things. Let's just try the chaos. Like the two bit or the three bit. As you can see, it's moving up and down with uh, with the volt output of, of the Shayas module. Now, one thing that you need to uh, see and pay attention to 
is like, okay, I'm going to disconnect this one for a second. Let's see the, I'm going to put this into 16 so we have a more shorter loop and we can see the difference. So now you see the blue one in the scope. It has its uh, rhythm, its loop. It's going up and down, up, up and down in the rhythm. Now, as soon as we connect it to the trigs, so the trigs are being modulated. And also the gates, uh, and also the, the, the output of the chaos, the, the three bit is also being modulated by the trigs. So it's not just one way that chaos is modulating the trigs volume going up and down. The trigs are also modulating the, the output of the of three bit chaos. As you can see, um, let me choose a, I will connect it to a slower from clock divider. So let's just go with four so that you can see it more obviously. So now you see, I'm gonna just for a second, disconnect the red cable so that we can see the blue one a little bit better. As you can see, it, was, it, it didn't used to look like this. It was different. Or maybe I can use the offset. And now I'm gonna disconnect this one here from the diode so you can see what the normal output of the shares would look like. The gates also. Now you see both of them are modulating each other. So it's not just one way. The both ends are going to be modulated. And one thing that you, I want you to have noticed is that, okay, the 60 note uh, that I'm showing you here, it doesn't matter where I connect it to. Like you might think like, you might think that, okay, so the trick that is only coming from here is being modulated, but this 16th, uh, this fourth note, whatever the pin is, it is, if you send it to other places, it's also modulated. So this is what I mean. I hope I made it clear. I'm not sure if I made it clear, but anyways. So yeah, you can use any sort of uh, CV to modulate one source and it doesn't have to be always gates. You can, I don't know. Uh, input the LFO or any other source of CV that you have into this pin and uh, modulate it with something else. So it's two ways and anything can be modulated with something else. Any sort of CV or gate can be modulated by any sort of CV or gate. Okay, so one other way that we can use the diode is like if we send it like a longer gate. Feed it into the input. And from there, attach. Let's just use the LFO here. To the diode here. And I'm going to connect the oscilloscope so we see what we're doing. So as you can see, what we are essentially doing with a long gate, we are modulating the tip of the gate. We can go faster. Which could be very interesting if you're using it to modulate different pitches. Uh, but now let me, instead of using this one, I can go higher, like do something crazy like that. But I'm going to use, uh, so this, this one is coming from Matt's. So as you can see, this one, it doesn't go, let me show you again. It doesn't go all the way down. So this is, maybe I want to go further down. So that's why I'm using Mats here. I'm gonna. This is the one that is coming from Mats. I'm gonna put it to the cycle mode, so they're cycling. So now you can see I'm getting like these longer, uh, going closer to the zero volt. So essentially, you can use anything. You can use envelopes, whatever that you want, and uh, send it there. Maybe we can do this. So while it goes high. Oh, sorry, envelope. Okay. 
something like this, anything. So uh, this this is a great source of uh, making new modulation sources for yourself. Okay, so let's talk about the capacitors. We have 0 0.1 microfarad capacitor and the 10 microfarad capacitor. So uh, first, let's see what they exactly do. Uh, let's connect the four clock divider to the 0 0.1 microfarad one. And uh, I will connect the red oscilloscope to the clock divider and the output to the blue one so we can see both of them. Now, as you can see, uh, while the gate is opening, it gives you this short burst stuff. So essentially, these two capacitors, they give you like a short decaying and long decaying envelopes on your gates or anything for that matter. As, as long as it goes up, there is this uh, uh, like curved decay that it gives out, puts out. And so this 0 0.1 is very short. It gives you one as the, as the gate is going up, goes up and gives you this one. And once the gate is closing, it, uh, it does the same thing on the reverse side. So you can invert this, I don't know, uh, offset it with some other external modules in your rack or whatever you have to use that one as well. Okay, let's see the 10 microfarad one. So as you can see, it's giving us longer decays. I think this one would be better shown, but if we go to a longer one, let's go to 0 0.5 from the clock divider. So you see this very nice long decaying envelope that we get from it. So this can be used in anything. You don't have to just feed it gates, obviously. You can try and use it on... Uh, like, then again, this Shea, so we're getting like notes. And maybe we could also, but now you see that the blue one is going down. Now, just imagine offsetting it so you have something completely new. Let's just, uh, let me quickly do that for you. I'm going to use mats and... Uh, Okay, I should go from the blue one real quick. Okay, uh, hopefully I'll bring this other one next to the scope so you can see it together. Now it's in the, I'm, I'm using a gray cable so you can see it. Now I'm just going to use mass and I'm going to offset it a little bit. So it's all in the positive realm and now I can use it anywhere. So this is like a completely brand new modulation derived from this one. Now, mind you this, you can also use the uh, 0.1, but it doesn't do much. Uh, you see, it can't do much because it's way too short. So this other one is way better for that one. We can also, we can also use it for, let's go to the 10 microfarad. And instead of this, giving it gates or uh, step sequences, let's just go through an envelope. Go through the envelope of the kick. I'm going to trigger it by hand. So uh, the red one is the original envelope of, uh, of the base module, the, the BD on, on its own. And... The blue one is the one that is uh, being modulated by the capacitor. So as you can see, it's giving this really nice tail going up again. Then again, you can also offset this. It's some minor stuff, but it could be interesting to do. Uh, all right, now, something very interesting we can do with the capacitor is that we can make a filter out of it. So let me just show you something. Let me connect this one to the noise input, noise output actually. And I'm going to show this with this one as well. So as you can see in the scope, uh, spectrum scope, uh, we have this noise with this all its shape. Now what we can do 
if we connect the ground from here to the other end of the capacitor, as you can see, it becomes like a fixed cutoff for the signal that you were doing. Uh, so it's cut off around like 200, 300, something like that, or maybe 500, I'm not sure. Uh, so it's cutting off this one. And with if we, if we connect the same things to the 0.1 microfarad, it's going to give us a, like a cutoff frequency at around 2K or something like that. So it's brighter. Now, what we can use with this is we can use it. We have like four filters, like, and if you need extra ones, you can also use this one for that matter. But we can use this as a slew limiter or like a smooth modulation source. Uh, let me show you what I mean by this. So uh, I'm going to quickly keep this green one attached because it's connected to the ground pin. Now, uh, let's do from the three bit of the output of the Sheas module and connect this to this one. So, and okay, so it's not doing much because as, you're, as you can see in the scope, because we're going from the 0 0.1 microfarad, if we go to this one, it's going to give us this slewed or smooth uh, output of, of the Sheas 3-bit, which is quite interesting. You can attach anything. You can attach gates. Anything that is quite edgy, you can slew it. So uh, I find it to be... And you can do it with the 10 microfarad because the 0 0.1 microfarad is not so effective on this one. But any source, any source can be used. Let's just try the gates here. So as you can see, the gates are being slewed. Anything, anything for that matter, you can use it. I find it to be very interesting, a great source. You can use it for uh, glide in your sense if you're using the three bits to the CV in, for example, of the base module. You can uh, make these like glides to the pitch, which is quite interesting. Okay, so let's talk about the controlled inverter here. So as you know, it's essentially the same thing as the inverter with uh, two differences. It will only invert or start inverting once there's a, uh, once you attach some volts into the CV input and it's above five volts. And the manual cells, you can only use it for gates because it's only putting out zero to 10 volt gates. So uh, that essentially makes it a comparator. And a comparator is like when uh, let me show you. Let me show you. I think this would be better if I showed you what it does. So first, let's uh, do the very simple thing. Let me show you what it does. I'm going to connect. This to this. So this is our oscilloscope going from here. Now we have this. I'm going into the input of the inverter and you can see the output. So once there's nothing connected to the CV, it's just putting out whatever that is receiving. Nothing special, right? But once it's once there is a CV, for example, let's just connect the 10 volt, so it's always working. It's essentially the same thing as the inverter. Or we can just connect it to another gate. So sometimes it's putting out inverted, sometimes it's not. So very interesting, you can use different kinds of gates, whatever you want to have. But the thing is, I don't want to feed it gates. I want to feed it something other than gates so that we can derive uh, rhythms from some other things. Let's just try the LFO. So as you can see, uh, let me lower the frequency so it's more obvious. The LFO, as the LFO is moving above 
or five volts, it's it's opening up the gate, and once it goes below it, the gate is closed. So very interesting way of driving patterns from it. Let's just connect this to the three bit on the Shayas module. So now we're getting a uh, more interesting rhythm as we talked, and let's connect this so we can also hear it. I will go through the output, the input of the base module. Now I'm going to connect something Let's just try this. Or maybe this one. Or if you want to go crazy to the two bit. Pretty crazy. So yeah, essentially, uh, this is it. It's a comparator. You can send it different sorts of CV and you can get different rhythms out of uh, those CV modulation sources that you're sending it, fitting it into. Okay, so now let's get into the patching part. Let's see what we have so far. This is the patch that I've made. It. Let's hear it first. Okay, so uh, what I tried to do was to kind of color code things. So any yellow patch cable that you see is for the kick. So as you see, it's coming from one bit going to the gate to trigger transformer, whatever that is called. And from there going to the trigger input of the kick. And so let's see the blue one. So the blue one is everything essentially for... Uh, the base module is coming from the three bit from the Shayas. So uh, what I'm doing here is from the ground, I am going to the 10 microfarad capacitor and the input of the uh, capacitor is coming from the three bit. So it's going to the, it is, it is c connected to the ground, so the capacitor is connected to the ground. So we are making that slew or uh, smooth modulation source that we that we did before, and uh, from there it's going to the inverter module, the control inverter, and the output of the control inverter is going to the trigger input, and the CV is uh, the CV is coming from the one bit in the sample and hold section of the shares module. So it's making this beat. Let me just... Now, if I disconnect this ground, uh, this ground loop so that we don't have this loop one, you can see uh, the difference that it makes. Nice groove. Now, what if I disconnected this uh, CV from this one? Okay, so and uh, let's move on to the hi-hat module. So everything that is green is for the hi-hat. So I did the original thing that we did. From the 16th node, I went to the diode 
and the diode is connected all the way to the output of the LFO. And uh, it's being tricked by that. So the, the volume of the hi-hat module is following this LFO that we have here. Now, from the output of the LFO, I've gone into the inverter, the regular inverter, and from there to the frequency cutoff. Let's see how it sounds like. Let's listen to the rest of the patch. So let's see. And for the snare module, what do we have? It's I'm using only the red patch cables. At least I've tried to. So the trig is. Oops. Oh my gosh. Okay. Uh, so uh, it's everything is coming from uh, the two bit from the sample and hold module, the sh the shares module. So it's going into the zero point one microfarad capacitor. Uh, to convert it to triggers for me, kind of. And then from there, it's going to trig input. And what we have here, then I have also sent another copy of the 2-bit to the switch module here. And the CV is coming from the two of the clock dividers. And then it's modulating the frequency cutoff of the band test filter on it. So on its own, it sounds like this. Okay, so let me just show you one little trick that I uh, found out just recently myself. It's great for when you are patching uh, one source to different locations and you want to have a macro control over it, but you, it's already too late. You have patched it to different locations and the patch is quite busy. So let's just uh, do this real quick. For example, I've set out the LFO to different places in my patch. Something like this. And let's just keep it like that. Two is enough. Now let me uh, connect the oscilloscope. So, so this is this, right? Now I want to have like a macro control over it, but it's already too late to connect it to the one of the attenuators and from the attenuator go to different locations. What I can do instead is just uh, connect this one to the output of one of the attenuators. As you know, this is the input and this is the output. So just uh, take a look at the oscilloscope as well and so you can see it better. So now you see it's the same thing. As I turn it down, it will start to decrease it. So it turns it down. And you know this because it goes if I connect it to anywhere, you can see that it's also uh, so the whole the source is being modulated by this attenuator. So if you want to have this like this micro control over what you have sent it to, you can easily connect it to the output, not the input, to the output of the attenuator, and that's it. 
All right, so thank you for watching and uh, please do let me know if you have any questions and if you have some other creative ideas that you have used these different modules or different sections of Pulsar, please share them in the comments so we can all use them together. All right, peace and have a good day.